Welcome to Cruelty for Musings. My name is Constance. Let's get into it. Today, today we're talking about Carmine, which is a red food coloring and cosmetic pigment. It is found in a bunch of stuff. So let's get into it. To begin, um, what is Carmine? What is it from? It is also called, I wrote down a bunch of stuff and my notebook is way over there. We're just gonna roll with it. It is, so Carmine is called Carmine, it's called uh, Cochineal, it's called Cochineal Extract, it's called Crimson Lake, it's called CL7452 or something like that. If I'm wrong, I'll include a note. We'll, we'll see. I might be wrong. It's happened. It has happened in the past. So, it's called a bunch of things. It's in almost everything, natural red food coloring, um, lipstick, eyeshadow. It can be considered cruelty free, but is not considered vegan. Why? Why is it not vegan? Well, it's made from insects. It is made specifically from dead insects. Like you harvest the insects, you get them into the bag, and then you submerge them in boiling water. It's a process not unlike silkworms. You silkworms spin themselves into cocoons, and then if you want an unbroken thread of silk, you have to kill the silkworm before it transforms into the, the moth, the mulberry moth, or whatever it is. Irrelevant. Anyway, to get silk in an unbroken strand, you have to kill the silkworm cocoon. Same kind of process for cochineal insects. You get them all together into a bag, you submerge it in boiling water. I think the percentage of the, the a uh, compound which creates the really vibrant red dye, which is really highly sought after and very expensive. I think that they have a concentration of something like 18 to 22 percent of their body is the compound that creates the vibrant red. So, once you've killed the insect, then you dry it in the sun to make it crispy. That's very important because the next step is smushing them up into a little powder. And then you soak the powder in alcohol to extract the color from the insect corpses. You might be able to tell from my vibrant and bouncy description that none of this bothers me. Like I have no problem with the concept of using insects to color things. Like, I don't have an emotional problem with it at all. I'm, I'm not, I forget what the religion is. Jainist. Something. My, uh, my knowledge of East India uh, religions is not strong. Anyway, <clears throat> so, um, you have this extract from cochineal insects where you've killed them and ground up their corpses and soaked them in alcohol and now you have an extract, not unlike vanilla extract. Same kind of process, you process the beans and then you soak it in alcohol to extract the flavor, or in this case, to extract the color. And then you evaporate off the alcohol and you're left with the powdery color that you can add to things. Just concentrated red color. 
Well. So we've established that this can be cruelty free, whatever that means, but it's not vegan because you have to kill the insects and smush them into powder in order to get the color out. Let's now take a detour into my religious views because I don't have a problem with using bugs to color things. I don't have a problem with killing bugs at all. I do frequently, in fact, kill bugs. That is a part of my everyday life, I would say, personally. I am not opposed to cruelty to insects, especially flying insects. I was stung by a bee at four years old. It left scars. An actual scar also. It left an actual scar on my ring finger joint. But not the point. I'm not opposed to killing insects in itself. So why are we talking about carmine? Why am I, as I referred to in my pan get things out of my collection introduction video, it's important to me that my red lipsticks be vegan and it's because of this, the carmine thing. So what's the big deal? I'm not opposed to using insects to color things in themselves. So why the problem with putting red insects on your lips? Apart from the obvious squick factor when you actually say that you're putting red insects on your lips. Well, my general perspective is that I don't want to put anything on my face, especially on my lips, that I'm not willing to eat. The lips thing, I feel like, makes sense on a, you know, transparent, like, it's, it's obvious. Don't put stuff on your lips that you're not willing to eat because if you wear it while you are eating, you are also wearing, you are also going to be eating the thing on your lips. Why am I not willing to eat cochineal insects? I feel like this is the point that we've gotten to. Something like this. We've gotten somewhere in this vicinity. Why am I, as a person, as your native Constance, why am I not willing to eat cochineal insects? Well, if you look up, is carmine kosher? The answer is no. And why does this matter to me? I am not Jewish. I am extremely not Jewish. Even if you look at my religious views, I am not strictly speaking Jewish. I am a combination of Jewish and Christian. I get labeled as, as neither fish nor fowl. Like, I don't, I don't fit in well. It doesn't bother me. I am where it makes sense for me to be. So, with that perspective in mind, I have eaten kosher. I don't eat kashrut, I don't abide by the orthodox laws of kosher. The, the animals that are kosher are land animals with a divided hoof that chew the, that chew the cud. So, like, not bunnies and squirrels, or camels, or pigs. Pretty much the one that's relevant to me in my daily life is no pig. Occasionally it comes up that rabbits are in something. Because I do live in the south, it comes up occasionally. And then on the other side, 
And and then sea animals have to have fins and scales. That means um, basically no shrimps, scallops, oysters, mollusks, uh, mollusks uh, of any description. Nothing that is broadly categorized as seafood, only fish proper, salmon, tilapia, flounder, tuna, etc., etc. So since cochineal is um, derived from a non-kosher insect, but it is also used in food dyes, it's a concern for eating kush fruit. And it was one of the first things that I thought of when I started thinking about the broader implications of going cruelty free. Like I was I was in the process of making the transition because it's important to me for reasons of not torturing animals and not paying other people to torture animals for me, which seems pretty obvious. And then I thought to myself, there are a lot of animal products in the beauty industry that are animal derived. That is a massive category. It is difficult to explain my feelings to someone who still happily eats bacon. But I have not voluntarily eaten pork or shrimp or seafood of any variety on any kind of consistent basis in uh, more than seven years at this point. I don't remember exactly when it started. It did start for health reasons. There was um, a guy at my work who got hold of a pig's head and uh, one of the parasites that can live on pigs burrowed into his brain and he was in the hospital for months. And that squicked the ever-living daylights out of me. I was like, at this point, an established and confirmed Christian, and I was like, you know, I feel like God told us not to eat some things for a reason, and maybe I should not eat some of the things that he told me not to eat. That is my... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Breathing saliva does not work. I recommend avoiding it. <sighs> My conversion to eating, broadly speaking, kosher, how I have always seen um, the, the Torah in general is, how then should we live? Having been set free, what are we supposed to be doing with our lives? And how are we supposed to stay healthy and in reasonable relationship with our neighbors? So that in a nutshell is why I eat kosher. It's because someone that I didn't know at my work had a very scary parasite from a pig's head burrow into his brain. And, um... And as a direct result of that, I'm no longer willing to eat pork. And I have not eaten pork on any consistent basis for more than seven years. And having come to the, the realization that I was putting things on my face that I wouldn't eat, I kind of decided to change that. So... It's important to me that red lipstick and lip liner be vegan because I don't want to eat the non-kosher bugs that they're made out of. A simple explanation 
for yet another example of why I am not your standard cruelty-free person. Yes, I went cruelty-free for reasons of not wanting to support animal cruelty, but also there's some layers in there. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this discussion through my brain and the intricacies of carmine and cochineal, which are the same thing, do not be deceived. And a little trip down the concept of kosher bugs. Some bugs are kosher and some aren't. I hope you enjoyed or learned something or both. That'd be a novel thought. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Now I know why people always clap when they do time transitions. It makes syncing audio so much easier when you record your audio externally. So!